Over the past few years, we have touched upon many of the amazing and often extremely ancient sites which dot our Earth. Many of these spectacular achievements, indicating to the countless specialists, archaeologists, geologists, and others involved, attempting unraveling of their true history, their true story of antiquity. On several occasions, we have been confronted with compelling and often conclusive explorative analysis, which has often resulted in the retrieval of compelling supportive artifacts which have supported the claim of them surviving past cataclysm, often accompanied by an ice age. Our sharing of this data has regularly received a mixed reception. The Sphinx, for example, which shows clear evidence of surviving this past event and subsequent ice age, which involved a flood event. We saw that many were interested in this premise, yet not convinced of such claims. However, a gentleman known as Mario Bildreps has taken this theory and, if confirmed to be correct in his preliminary findings, may have established it as a fact beyond all possible doubt. A link to his website will, of course, be in the description. Mario, it seems, has been very busy. He has correlated the orientation of over 500 ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world to what he claims is a 99% accuracy to the temperature changes during the last glaciation cycles. Most ancient structures, therefore, he has concluded, are hundreds of thousands of years old and not just a few thousand. Many of the pyramids and temples have been renovated over the millennia, new structures forming on top of older foundations, while the orientation of these foundations remain unchanged. Chichen Itza and Baalbek are two good examples of this practice. He states that the proof is mathematically backed up from start to finish. He adds, the orientation of a building is purely mathematical, because orientation is dimensionless or not materialistic. When we process the orientations of virtually all ancient buildings around the world, it reveals a profound discovery. He claims his research is so new, so innovating, that you won't find anything like this anywhere else, except maybe some copies of this original material on other websites. About 57% of the 501 randomly spread ancient structures that were involved in this research accumulate massively in five clusters of together just 20 degrees or 22.2% along the intersection line. This line is also a purely mathematical entity that runs from our current North Pole to our current South Pole along a longitude of 47.1 degrees west. It appears a big chunk of his research has been directed towards developing a cardinal reference line, an imaginary line drawn upon the globe which could be used to match ancient structures to a past location of the cardinal points. Of course, if his mathematics can be peer-reviewed and ultimately found to be correct, he could truly be on to something. His research will not only push back the theories involving the chronological development of man, but also prove beyond doubt pre-Columbian voyage up to a half a million years ago, among many other startling realities. The collective orientation of contemporary buildings points almost exactly at our current geographic pole. You might say that the collective unconscious orients itself to the geographical pole, or as many people would say, to the sun. The more data you gather, whether it's in a region, one country, one continent, or the whole world, the more obvious it becomes that contemporary buildings add up to the geographic pole. There is no contemporary culture to find that has a preference for a specific orientation, other than a cardinal orientation. It is undoubtedly interesting research, which we implore you to peruse further. We will keep you posted on future developments regarding Mario's work. Giza is a literal treasure trove once lost to antiquity. Due to the sheer enormity of the Great Pyramid and its two slightly smaller neighbors, it's undoubtedly the greatest ancient wonder anywhere on Earth. A smorgasbord of mysteries drenches the plateau and beyond. Throughout Egypt, incredibly intricate, accurately carved, enormous stone megaliths and surviving temples can be found. The Great Pyramid of Cheops which contains the claimed sarcophagus of Khufu, 
which would not have fitted into the structure, this regardless of how they created such enormous yet astoundingly plumb structures, set over such a large area of space and indeed with the weight of the stones used. The global alignments to these monuments also match the known speed of light. The depth of the mysteries of ancient Egypt we have only but scratched the surface of. We do not know how the pyramids were built, and we are no closer to an explanation which is logical for why they were constructed, regardless of the illogical rubbish taught today, than when rediscovered. One said mystery is yet another curiosity surrounding water, the other namely the water controversy of the erosion of the Sphinx. The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure undoubtedly show that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates, Robert Scotch, argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock proposed that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure, and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier, in around 36,000 BC a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt, as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. We fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. It pertains to a dusting of curious drainage systems found built into, or rather just below, original temple structures. The peculiar thing regarding the enigmatic flow chambers is not only their tiny size, as if harvesting rather than to be used for ancient drainage of precipitation. However, if indeed proven for the removal of rainwater, it would defend additional alternative historical theories regarding the posit of how the Sphinx lost its nose to rain. This pushes its date of construction, however, into an era not acceptable within modern paradigm. What were these curious channels? What were they constructed for? The channels focused upon in this video can be found protruding from beneath the north side of the Sphinx Temple. These enigmatic channels have been studied and examined by a number of Egyptologists and enthusiasts alike. The diagrams created showing inner designs of these mysterious features have shed no light on their original purpose, as if one did indeed simply perceive them as drainage systems, they are practically far too small in diameter. Additionally, this channel in particular actually angles inwards toward the temple itself, as if the creators were instead feeding fluid into the temple itself. The mystery remains unsolved. Yet regardless, we find these anomalous channels highly compelling. No other ruins anywhere on our planet is surrounded with more controversy than that of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, or indeed its accompanying plateau. There are many factors to consider when it comes to Egyptology. Within academic fields, there are many no-go areas of study. Although hard work and research within permitted areas has taught us a great deal about the previous 4,000 years of the site's inhabitants. Yet regardless of the most astute academic thesis, there remains three, proverbially, large elephants in the room. When it comes to a full or even a mere fraction of an explanation in regards to the origin of these seemingly impossibly huge pyramids remains patiently absent. No accounts, illustrations of any kind from the era exists. It is simply illogical, especially when one considers the sheer feat these structures must have been. We have presented many previous features, polygonal masonry being present on the pyramids. Eroded, yet younger casing stones, protecting inner megaliths, 
clearly of a tremendous age. Salt sediment found encrusting the lower chambers, and so on, suggesting not only that the pyramids are much older than currently claimed, but were pre-flood ruins. Thus, questions arise. Just how old are the Great Pyramids? In addition to our study of the pyramids, we have also, in the past, asserted that the Sphinx was originally a lion, which, interestingly, correlates to the following hypothesis with fascinating accuracy. The Orion Theory The coincidence with pyramids aligned with Orion's belt and other significant constellational positions. Bavall and Hancock support the theory, believing the Great Sphinx was begun in 10,500 BC, creating reference to the constellation of Leo and the orientation of the entire complex with the Nile River and even Milky Way, claimed by them as connected respectively. Zeptepi, using similar methodology, put the age at over 13,000 years. These are clearly astonishing proposals, but the current paradigm for their chronology, we feel, is far too short a time span, and due to our own research, which has uncovered evidence indicative of pre-flood origins, copper tools for such an accomplishment a mere insult to intelligence. Yet, thankfully, due to these various takes on events, their age remains highly contested, and to us, a mystery which is incredibly compelling.